Alexei de Tocqueville, in his amazing book, Democracy in America, he said, nothing is more wonderful than the art of being free. And nothing is harder to learn how to use than freedom. See, de Tocqueville came to the United States in the 1800s, and he was trying to figure out what made this country so amazing. And that was his study, and he went all over the country, and he finally, finally he says, I finally found it. I finally found it. He said, I, I didn't find it in the structures, in the systems, in the, in the, it really, I didn't even find it in the documents. I didn't find it in the system of law. He said, I found it in the communities. I found it in the churches. I found it in the families. He said, America is great because America is good. And if America ever ceases to be good, America will cease to be great. See, what he was talking about, he called the mores, but he was talking about the values, the morals, the, the way people treated, the, the way they took responsibility individually and the way they took responsibility in their families, the way they chose to use that freedom. What amazing gift, freedom. Right? And, and I, I send you this, I make you this video on the anniversary, on the 4th of July, the anniversary, the 245th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Happy birthday. You know, it's, isn't it great to have a birthday celebration where you get to celebrate, you get to eat cake, but you didn't get a year older. <laughs> Not on this day anyway, probably. Maybe some of you have a birthday on the 4th of July. But what a powerful thought. And uh, here, here's a thought I want you to consider. It, it, we love, we love to take an idea and make it big. I don't know if it's a human nature thing, but we love to make something big. And then sometimes we look at that big thing and, and we can talk about it. We can worry about it. Maybe we can complain about it. Maybe we can hope and dream about it. Maybe we can say, I wish they, or I wish somebody, or I wish it weren't that way. But so often... Those big things, when we bring them down to our world, they become personal. They become a real living, breathing challenge for you and I. Well, let me, let me make this practical for you. When they finally figured out this structure of a government, Ben Franklin is walking out of the meeting in Philadelphia and he bumps into the, the, the widow of one of the former mayors of Philadelphia. And she says, what sort of government have you given us, sir? And he, <laughs> he said, a republic, madam, if you can keep it, if you can keep it, if you can keep it, if you can keep it. In other words, freedom is an incredible gift, but it's hard to use. It's hard to use. And I wanted to make this so practical in your family or in your community or in your work and your if you maybe you own the business or in you you work in a company but you've been given something and you get to choose you have a you have more liberty more freedom i have more liberty i have more freedom than i often care to exercise again the big thing i like to think about the big thing and think like oh, oh but, but 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 this but no 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 my, my parents my grandparents they gave me a gift. They gave me a gift of life. And then after that, they gave me a gift of, what will you do with it? How will you spend it? How will you choose to spend your days and your weeks and your hours? Where will you choose to live? And then you get this choice over and over and over again. Would you like to stay there or would you move? You, know, you get this choice over and over again. Who, who would you like to spend time with? You know, this year, who would you like to spend more time with? Who, who would you like to spend less time with? What sort of conversations will you choose to have this year that maybe you didn't have last year? What sort of conversations will you choose not to have this year that you just, you had too many of those kind of conversations last year? I'm going to give you a very simple example. My grandfather, my grandfather came to this country. He, was, he, he fought in World War II. He was German. But he fought in World War II on the United States, on the American side. He left Germany at the age of 16, 16 in a few months. 
And he, he had to sneak out, basically. He had to get out because they, they were drawing up soldiers. It was 1938. It was just a few months before Kristallnacht. And his father saw what was going on, right? And his father had given him this gift of if you can keep it, if you can keep it. You have the freedom to make choices if you can keep it. You have, the, you have this liberty in deciding what to do with your life, how to lead your life how to build your family, where to live, what kind of work to pursue, what kind of a person to become if you can keep it. You've heard this expression probably many times before, but freedom, freedom, liberty is always just one generation away from dying. And it takes us, the if you can keep it, the, to keep the flame going. And my grandfather comes to this country at the age of 16. And then he raises his family. And he got to choose how he would raise his family. And he demonstrated patience. And he demonstrated loyalty. And he, de he demonstrated unconditional love within his family. And I, the last conversation I had with him I, I, on his deathbed, and he was dying in a VA hospital in New York City. And I said, if I could just pass on one thing, to, to your great-grandchildren, one piece of advice, one piece of wisdom to your great-grandchildren for you. What would you like me to tell them? And he was quiet for a bit. And then he said, love God and love family. Love God and love family and don't let, don't let anything get in the way of those two. I thought, well, thank you. And he, he was passing on an if you can keep it. If you can keep it. If you can keep it. I think in a way he was saying, Jonathan, demonstrate that first. Jonathan, demonstrate that. And then give that to your children and give that to your grandchildren. If you can keep it. Here's my gift to you. The freedom to choose what kind of a parent, what kind of a community member, what kind of a citizen, what kind of a leader, what kind of a business person you'll be, what kind of a friend and spouse you'll be, if you can keep it. This 4th of July, this Independence Day, I want to encourage you, I want to inspire you, I want to challenge you to think, what gifts have you been given that you actually know? You know their gifts. You know, when you really step back and think about it, you know their gifts from a family member, from a friend, from, from maybe a mentor in your life, from maybe a, a boss you had or a teacher you had once in your life or a sports coach you had, or maybe somebody you've never met, but somebody who you, you met through books or you met through movies or you met through watching a special on them. Maybe it's an athlete or an activist or, or somebody who led a social cause. Maybe it's a, I don't know, maybe it's a Gandhi. Somebody who inspires you, who gave you a gift. And the words whispered are, if you can keep it.